All right, welcome to the the lecture video, chapter nine, video number two. This is where we're going to talk about nuclear power. All right. So although nuclear power does not come from a fossil fuel, it is fueled by uranium, which is also obtained by mining, and that uranium is non-renewable. As of September 2020, there were 441 nuclear power reactors in operation and 53 nuclear power plants under construction in 19 countries. Of the 106 power plants currently being planned, most are in China, India, and Russia. Factors that influence attitudes towards nuclear power are concerns about safety, accidents, decommissioning, terrorism, etc. Climate change, so nuclear power doesn't release carbon dioxide gas. Anti-nuclear attitudes and economics, like the cost of building nuclear power plants and the price of competing fuels. Here's some statistics about nuclear reactors. Take some time and study this table. Just look for some general trends. So of all the operable reactors in the world, a little less than a quarter are in the U.S., which is interesting to notice. Um, and they're distributed throughout, although most seem to be in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, and then you can also see plans for future reactors. So even though the U.S. has almost 100, we don't really have plans to build a lot more, right? Whereas China is going to almost double their number of nuclear reactors. Russia, a little bit less than doubling. India is going to add 50% more than what they have now. So interesting numbers to look at here. The distribution of nuclear power plants in North America, we see they're clustered in the eastern half of the country. And Michigan has a number. I think four, it looks like. All right. The nature of nuclear energy. So the nuclei of certain atoms are unstable and spontaneously decompose. And these isotopes are radioactive. Neutrons, electrons, protons, and other larger particles are released during nuclear disintegration, along with a great deal of energy. And a radioactive half-life is the time it takes for half the radioactive material to spontaneously decompose. So, for example, the uranium-235 that's used in nuclear power plants, in nature, it takes 700 million years for half of uranium-235 to decompose into a different isotope. And they're sorted by half-life here. So this is a very long half-life, right? But there's some, like radon-220, takes less than a minute for half of radon-220 to decompose into some other isotope. Nuclear disintegration releases energy from the nucleus as radiation. And there are three major types of radiation, which you should know. Alpha radiation consists of moving particles composed of two neutrons and two protons. It can be stopped by the outer layer of skin. Beta radiation consists of electrons from the nucleus, and it can be stopped by a layer of clothing, glass, or aluminum. Gamma radiation is a form of electromagnetic radiation. It can pass through your bodies several centimeters of lead or even a meter of concrete. Now, nuclear chain reactions are caused by nuclear fission. And nuclear fission occurs when moving neutrons impact and split the nuclei of certain atoms. In a nuclear chain reaction, splitting nuclei release neutrons, which themselves strike more nuclei, releasing even more neutrons.
right. So, for example, if there's a uranium-235 that collides with a neutron, that neutron is going to release so much energy from the uranium-235 that it's going to spew out its neutrons, and those will go flying and crash into other uranium-235s, which will release a bunch of energy and send their neutrons flying around. So we can see how it can quickly snowball. Only certain kinds of atoms are suitable for the development of a nuclear chain reaction. And the two most common are uranium-235 and plutonium-239. There must also be a certain quantity of nuclear fuel, a critical mass, for the chain reaction to occur. A nuclear reactor is a device that permits a sustained and controlled nuclear fission chain reaction. <clears throat> the most common nuclear fuel is uranium-235. When the nucleus of a uranium-235 atom is struck by a slowly moving neutron from another atom, the nucleus splits into smaller particles. <clears throat> when neutrons are released, they strike more atoms, and this chain reaction continues to release energy until the fuel is spent or the neutrons are prevented from striking U-235 nuclei. Let's talk about reactors now. A moderator is a substance that absorbs energy, which slows neutrons, enabling them to split the nuclei of other atoms more effectively. Water and graphite are the most commonly used moderators. Control rods made of non-fissionable material are lowered into the reactor to absorb neutrons and control the rate of fission. When they're withdrawn, the rate of fission increases. Coolant, usually water, manages the heat produced by transferring it away from the reactor. And heavy liquid, liquid metals and gases are used as coolants in some reactors. In the production of electricity, a nuclear reactor serves the same function as a fossil fuel boiler. It produces heat, which converts water to steam and turns a turbine, generating electricity. The three most common types of reactors are pressurized water, boiling water, and heavy water. Gas-cooled reactors are not popular, and no new plants of this type are being constructed. Breeder reactors produce nuclear fuel as they produce electricity. Liquid sodium efficiently moves heat away from the reactor core, and they're called liquid metal fast breeder reactors. A fast-moving neutron is absorbed by uranium-238 and produces uranium-239. P-239 is fissionable fuel. Most breeder reactors are considered experimental. Because P-239 can be used in nuclear weapons, breeder reactors are politically sensitive. All right, and here's a nice graphic of the formation of plutonium-239 in a breeder reactor. So here we have a U-238. It has 92 protons and 146 neutrons. And it's struck by a neutron. It changes into U-239 with 147 protons. So same number of protons, so it's still uranium but the number of neutrons has changed. All right, and then here we see when the number of protons changes, that's when the molecule changes its name. Nuclear fuel cycle begins with mining of low-grade uranium ore, primarily from Australia, Kazakhstan, Canada, and Namibia, and this produces about 70%, 76% of the world's uranium. During the milling process, the ore is crushed and treated with a solvent to concentrate the uranium. And milling produces yellow cake, a material containing 70 to 90% uranium oxide nuclear fuel cycle. So naturally occurring uranium contains about 99.3% of non-fissionable 
U-238, and 0.7% fissionable U-238. It must be enriched to 3% to be concentrated enough for most nuclear reactors. Centrifuges separate the isotopes by the slight differences in their mass, and U-235 weighs slightly less than U-238. The enriched uranium is converted into a powder and then into pellets, and the pellets are sealed into metal rods. The fuel rods are used in a reactor where fission occurs and U-235 concentration slowly decreases. After about three years of operation, the fuel rods don't have enough radioactive material remaining to sustain a chain reaction, and the spent fuel rods are replaced by new ones. The spent rods are still very radioactive, containing about 1% U-235 and 1% plutonium. Spent fuel rods are reactive, radioactive and must be managed carefully to prevent health risks and environmental damage. Rods can be processed. So U-235 and plutonium are separated from the spent fuel and used to manufacture new fuel rods. Less than half of the world's fuel rods are reprocessed ones. At present, India, Japan, Russia, France, and the UK operate reprocessing plants as an alternative to storing rods as waste. Rods that are not reprocessed are placed in long-term storage, currently stored on-site at the nuclear power plant, initially in pools of water. After the radioactivity of the rods declines, they're stored above ground. Ultimately, they are to be stored underground. All right, and here's a nice flow chart of steps in the nuclear fuel cycle. So it begins with mining and milling. Then it needs to be converted into solid yellow cake. Enrichment, and then fuel fabrication. So enriched UF6 gas undergoes reactions from solid uranium oxide, which is formed into the rods. All right, and then waste storage so waste is why does it go that way fuel fabrication to a reactor so the fuel is used to produce electricity it is spent the spent fuel rods are either sent to a reprocessing reprocessing center or waste storage facility all right transportation so all the processes involved in the nuclear fuel cycle have the potential to generate waste. And each step in the nuclear fuel cycle involves the transport of radioactive materials. Each of these links is in the fuel cycle and presents the possibility of an accident or mishandling that could release radioactive material. 910, issues related to the use of nuclear fuels. Most of the concerns about the use of nuclear fuels relate to the danger associated with radiation. The absorbed dose is the amount of energy absorbed by matter. It's measured in grays or rads. The damage caused by alpha particles is 20 times greater than that caused by beta particles or gamma rays. And the dose equivalent is the absorbed dose times a quality factor. biological effects of ionizing radiation. When alpha or beta particles or gamma radiation interact with atoms, ions are formed. Therefore, it's known as ionizing radiation. Ionizing radiation alters biological molecules. It affects DNA and can cause mutations. Mutations that occur in some tissues of the body may manifest themselves as abnormal tissue growths, known as cancers. Large doses of radiation are clearly lethal. Demonstrating known harmful biological effects from smaller doses is much more difficult. And the more radiation a person receives, the more likely it is that there will be biological consequences. 
Time, distance, and shielding are the basic principles of radiation protection. Water, lead, and concrete are the common materials used for shielding from gamma radiation. Here you see someone in a hazmat suit with a Geiger counter. All right, and radiation can have a number of different effects depending on the person and the environment where the exposure occurred. Reactor safety. So let's talk about Three Mile Island. Three Mile Island is a nuclear plant in Pennsylvania that experienced a partial core meltdown in 1979. It began with pump and valve malfunction, but operator error compounded the problem. The containment structure prevented the release of radioactive materials from the core, but the radioactive steam was vented into the atmosphere. The crippled reactor was defueled in 1990 at a cost of about $1 billion and placed in monitored storage until its companion reactor was shut down. Its companion reactor was shut down in 2019 and both reactors will be decommissioned. So you can see a picture. This is the damaged reactor over here. And this reactor was shut down in 2019. Chernobyl is a small city in Ukraine, north of Kiev. It's the site of the world's largest nuclear accident, which occurred in 1986. Experiments were being conducted on the reactor, and operators violated six important safety rules. They shut off all automatic warning systems, automatic shutdown systems, and the emergency core cooling system for the reactor. In four and a half seconds, the energy level of the reactor increased 2,000 times. The cooling water converted to steam and blew the 1,000 metric ton concrete roof from the reactor. The reactor core caught fire and it took 10 days to bring the burning reactor under control. There were 37 deaths. 500 people were hospitalized, 237 of those with acute radiation sickness, and 116,000 people had to be evacuated. 24,000 evacuees received high doses of radiation. Children and fetuses exposed to the fallout are showing increased frequency of thyroid cancer because of exposure to radioactive iodine-131 released from Chernobyl. And patient, permanent containment structure was placed over the damaged reactor in 2016. That's the containment structure there. The Fukushima nuclear power plant was damaged on March 11th of 2011, following a magnitude 9 earthquake and tsunami. Heat exchangers were damaged and power to the site was cut off. The diesel generators designed to provide power in emergency were flooded and stopped operating. Explosions, fires, and leaks in the cooling system released radiation into the atmosphere and seawater. About 30 employees and contractors received high levels of radioactivity. An evacuation zone was established around the site and some areas are still restricted today. All six reactors at the Fukushima were permanently shut down and the Japanese government shut down all nuclear power plants in the country for reevaluation of their safety. By 2020, 24 nuclear power plants were scheduled for decommissioning and 16 were granted permission to restart. Terrorism. After September 11 of 2001, fear arose regarding attacks on nuclear plants as potential targets for terrorist attacks. Nuclear experts feel aircraft wouldn't significantly damage the containment building or reactor, and the normal emergency and containment functions would prevent the release of radioactive materials. Probably the greatest terrorism-related threat is from radiologically dispersed devices or dirty bombs. They cause panic, not numerous deaths. Decommissioning nuclear power plants. So the life expectancy of most electrical generating plants, fossil fuel or nuclear, is 30 to 40 years. And unlike other plants, 
nuclear plants are decommissioned, not demolished. Decommissioning is a two-step process. Stage one includes removing, properly disposing of, or storing fuel rods and water used in the reactor. And stage two is the final disposition of the facility. There are three options to the second stage of the decommissioning process. <clears throat> we could decontaminate and dismantle the plant as soon as it's shut down. We could secure the plant for many years to allow radioactive materials that have a short half-life to disintegrate and then dismantle the process. However, this process should be completed within 60 years. Or we could entomb the contaminated portions of the plant by covering the reactor with reinforced concrete and placing a barrier around the plant. Currently, this option is only considered suitable for small research facilities. Today, about 170 commercial nuclear power plants and about 48 experimental reactors and 500 research reactors in the world have been shut down and are in various stages of being decommissioned. Recent experience indicates that the cost for decommissioning a large plant will be between 200 and 400 million, about 5% of the cost of generating electricity. Although the mechanisms vary among countries, the money for decommissioning is generally collected over the useful life of the plant. So in summary, resources are naturally occurring substances of use to humans. Reserves are known deposits for which materials can be extracted profitably with existing technology under present economic conditions. Coal is the world's most abundant fossil fuel. The supply of oil, like all fossil fuels, is limited. And natural gas is another major source of fossil fuel energy, but transport of natural gas to consumers is problematic. Nuclear fission is the splitting of a nucleus of an atom. And all reactors contain a core with fuel, a moderator to control the rate of reaction, and a cooling mechanism to prevent the reactor from overheating. The nuclear fuel cycle involves mining and enriching an original uranium ore, fabricating it into fuel rods, using that fuel in reactors, and reprocessing or storing spent fuel rods. Fuel and waste must also be transported, and each step in the process presents a danger of exposure. Although accidents at Three Mile Island and Chernobyl raised safety concerns for a time, rising energy prices have stimulated increased building of nuclear power plants in many countries. Disposal of the waste is expensive and controversial. Long-term storage in geologically stable regions is supported. Russia, Japan, and the UK operate nuclear reprocessing facilities to reduce future long-term storage needs. All right, and that's it for chapter nine. Make sure you watch both videos number one and this one number two.